Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It is Monday. Does it feel like Monday? It certainly does. It feels yes. like Monday, and it's it December 17th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have a very <gasps> illustrious guest today. We do. We have the wonderful June Squibb here with us today. Very exciting. Yay. She is starring in Waitress, the musical, of course, over at the Brooks Atkinson. And you're going to chat with June. I am going to chat bit. with June, but first, our top five. And we're losing our chill over this punk rock girl. That's right. Joe Iconis, who will be making his Broadway debut in finally. 2019. Finally. Is right with Be More Chill. It was a big off-Broadway hit. Making the transfer to the main stem very soon. But ever the one to not stay not too busy for too long. Joe Iconis is working on a new jukebox musical titled Punk Rock Girl. And it will be featuring the songs of female musicians, including Avril Lavigne, Blondie, Pat Benatar, and Pink. I'm already sold. I like it. I like yep, it. I'm already loving this. It'll <laughs> center on Angela Quivers. She's a 16-year-old perfectionist who never takes chances and feels like there's no place where she belongs until she meets Proxy, a teenager who pulls her into a world of grungy guitars, shocking secrets, and big, loud, messy emotions. Very exciting. <laughs> into it. Um, collaborating with Joe Iconis on this new musical is Jennifer Werner. Uh, she will be directing and choreographing. Uh, she worked on The Black Suits. And Rob Rikiki, who will uh, work on the arrangements like he did for the Lightning Thief musical. Cool. Which is another big popular property right there. So very exciting. <laughs> Joe Iconis, punk rock girl, coming to us. Soon. TBD. <laughs> Fair enough. And one of our favorites is returning to the stage back home at the public. This is some Ooh. good news, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Absolutely. We have a Tony winner returning to the stage. We are talking about Hamilton Tony winner, Davi Diggs, the very talented individual. Yes. He will be appearing in White Noise at the Public Theater. This is Susan Laurie Parks' play. And it will. he will be joined by uh, Shira Irving and Zoe Winters. Very exciting. Directed by Public Theater Artistic Director Oscar Eustace. Let me give you the dates. Previews begin March 5th. This mm -hmm. is coming up soon, right? Yeah. Opening Which night is set crazy. for March 20th. I know, because it feels yeah, like it it's still September, but it's not. It's no. December. That's where we are. Um, the play follows longtime friends and lovers who are educated, progressive, cosmopolitan, and woke. Okay. When a racially motivated incident with the cops leaves Leo, that's David Diggs' character, shake, and he decides extreme measures must be taken for self-preservation. Okay. Yeah. This sounds Lurie explosive. Parks she knows what she's one doing. One of the best in David Diggs. Limited engagement through April 14th. More casting to come. Already a hot ticket. Yeah, absolutely. It truly is Once Upon a December. That's right. Cody Simpson and Christy Altamar, of course, are starring in Anastasia over at the Broadhurst Theater. And they made a cute little music video for Once Upon a December. It's super adorable. Cody Simpson, of course, a very recent Broadway.com fresh face. He is making his Broadway debut in the show. Um, he will, uh, he's playing Dimitri, of course, and you can watch the music video on our site right now. You can even see Cody Simpson playing a little guitar. Look at that. Video Look that. at that. With super you talented. Showing us what that means. That's that, yes, exactly. <laughs> Just, you know, a visual representation <laughs> in case you didn't know what a guitar was. <laughs> We appreciate you. Yes, you're welcome. Go watch it. It's, very, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the boss has left Broadway, but he's landed on Netflix. Guys, you already knew this was happening, and mm -hmm. you're probably just pausing it to watch this, and you're going to go right back to it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Springsteen. Yes. He loves Broadway. He we does. Love him. He has a yeah, Tony Award. We give him a special Tony Award. We yeah. do things like that. Not us, personally. No, we didn't, yeah. but we, we're, yes. we're fine with it. We're cool. We, we're, we're Absolutely. happy. So he, of course, was at the Walter Kerr Theater for a long time. We extended three times right around the corner yeah, from us. Yeah, supposed to be eight weeks, turned into 14 months. That's crazy. <laughs> it was that long. I think so. And yet, right. never gave us a ticket. Not bitter, because now you can watch it on Netflix. <laughs> That's right. See, you've got yep. the best seat in the house. Yep. You can pause it. You can stream it. You can watch it over and over. You can Look watch it that. for 14 months straight. It's up to you. <laughs> Up uh, to you. Hey, do you want me to tell you how much money Springsteen made? I would like to hear how much I money. I thought you like it. Made. He yeah. made more money than the state of New Jersey. No, I just made that up. He made. <laughs> <laughs> this is too big of a number for me to read. Shall we do it together? Yeah. One million. Eight hundred ninety-five thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars and no cents. Wow! But it makes Almost a lot of sense. Watch him on Netflix. Dollars. That's really yeah. amazing. With only four performances per yeah. week. People love the boss. Filled the house to a hundred percent. The whole time. And now you can see it on Netflix. So. There you go. And La Vie Boheme, because we got inside the rehearsal studio. Wow, this is January big. 27th, 2019, Rent Live. 
will appear on all our television screens. We're very excited. And now we have backstage rehearsal photos uh, to look at, or back studio rehearsal photos. Rehearsal what they? photos. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we got the exclusive on these for a little bit. You can see them all on the site right now. Um, of course, Brandon Victor Dixon, Vanessa Hudgens, Jordan Fisher, Kyala Settle, Brennan Hunt, Mario Tanash, Kersey Clemens, and Valentina are all part of Rent Live. We're very excited to see it. Uh, January 27th, 2019, Fox at 7 p.m. We can't wait. Eastern I know Standard all of you Time. Are excited? It's Rent. <laughs> what else do you need to know? Do you want to sing a little lovey bohem? No. Right now, okay. no. I wouldn't want to do that to everybody. Well, then yes. forget it. You yes. can just it's, leave. You, know, you can just get out. It's Squibs time. It's Jim Squibs time. Up enough of her time. It's Squibs yes. time. So thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Caitlin, tell us about our guest. Gladly, guys. Yes, we have Oscar nominee June Squibb with us today because she is currently back on Broadway in the role role of old Josie in Waitress. She's the first woman to play this role because it was originally Old Man Joe. Um, she earned an Oscar nomination for her role in Nebraska. Her other screen credits include Alice, Age of Innocence, Table 19, other people we could talk about her screen credits for a very long time because she's very amazing. Um, her other Broadway credits include Sacrilege, Gory Stories, The Happy Time, and Gypsy. Uh, she's also appeared off-Broadway in The Public Good, No Shoestrings, and The Boyfriend. Follow Waitress Musical on social media at Waitress Musical to stay up to date on everything you need to know about June and the amazing show. And please leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome June and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hi, Hi June. Thanks for coming in. I'm thrilled. Well, first of all, tell us how it feels to be on, in Waitress. You're back on the Broadway. Back on Broadway. Not only is it exciting to be back on Broadway, but I'm with the most wonderful company in the world. They are so darling. They, they really are. They're just a wonderful group of, of young people. Now, it's very unusual for producers to take, or, or creators, to take a character that was mm -hmm. written as a man and just change it up. Did you ever think you would be up for the same role as Al Roker? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I met Al while he was doing it. But no, really, it is unusual. No, it is that unusual. Is a, and and I, I think you've got to give them credit. I think uh, Jessie Nelson, I think that she directed me in a film called Love the Coopers. And uh, we certainly understood each other and got along and, and wanted to work together some more. And she had done this and uh, suggested I see it, and I did. And I was charmed by it. This was when it first opened, a few months after it first opened. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about this for quite a while, but it finally worked out where schedules, my schedule basically, would, would let this happen. It's so exciting. So. so tell us what Broadway was like when you made your Broadway debut in Gypsy oh, with Ethel Oh gosh, Merman. I made it in Gypsy, and they were moving from the Broadway Theater to the Imperial, and that's when I went in when they reopened at the Imperial Theater. And that number, it, I did a, you got to get a gimme. You were Electra. I did an Electra. You with lit the, up the stage. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Every time I bumped, a light went on. <laughs> but it was, uh, it, it, it's a, such a classic musical. And I think we knew then. I used to listen every night to the overture. Just sit there and Gorgeous listen music. to it. It was just unbelievable. And this is when it was happening. And uh, the number was great. I did the road tour because Merman was doing it, and uh, they wanted me to, to do it. And uh, it, it, it was, we would get reviews, and it would be a toss-up as to whether the number, you got to get a gimme, or Merman was going to get the first review. That this really was on makes the sense, road. actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Ethel Merman did not appreciate the competition. Well, no, she, she was fine with it. She loved it. She, it we really all became quite a, a nice family. And she, hear. you know, she, she was a wonderful woman. I adored her, and I also respected her tremendously. And, and she was a good gossip, too, wasn't she? Oh, Just, that's, that's she what I loved heard. Oh, she loved gossip. She, and she would, she would always want to know, you know, who was with who in the company. See, some and things everything. about Broadway don't change at all. No. <laughs> we all just want to hear about everyone and, else's and life. And dirty jokes. Oh. She told me a dirty joke on stage every night. On stage? Mm -hmm. Like I was, we, I was in front of a scrim doing the lights, and she would sidle up behind me, Joan, and she would tell me a dirty joke. You're not going to tell us? 
No. Oh. I mean, I don't remember them oh. at this point. That was years <laughs> ago. <laughs> well, now you're back in, on the Broadway yeah. in Waitress. Tell me what it's like to just be with these, you know, this incredible company. Well, it, it's, uh, you, you appreciate what is happening with the young people in theater. I do now, much more so than I did before. And I have I had gotten so involved with film and television that I just was not spending time, you know, in New York at all. Yeah, you're in a Los Angeles person right, now. Yeah, you? now I am. And it it just it I don't know how to explain it. They are just so up for the show mm -hmm. and, and for solving any problems that appear, you know, and just being there for it. It's wonderful. I think they really want to be there and be They with you. do. <laughs> and you have an illustrious film career. So who is it better to be married to, Bruce Stern or Jack Nicholson? <laughs> <laughs> not in real life. If, if, if not I, in real life. Not in real life. No, if I said Jack, I, I would not want to hurt Bruce ever. But <laughs> that's, that's very diplomatic. Yeah. But yeah. working with both of them must have been amazing. Yeah, it was. It was. It, Jack is a wonderful actor, and uh, with a director, and both films were with Alexander Payne directing, right. and that's pretty special as well. Tell us your memories of Oscar night. I'm, I just want to ask all the juicy <laughs> questions. We'll get to the other questions later. I, a lot of it becomes a blur. We had a whole year, starting with Cannes, where we got to go, and sure. uh, it, it, it was a whole year from Khan to, uh, well, from May to March. Uh, to the Academy the Awards. The Oscars, mm -hmm. and uh, so we had so many, you know, we had so many screenings that we were a part of, but also all of the, uh, all of the award season, Golden Globes and everything. Sounds like you had to wear a lot of dresses. I did, and <laughs> I, Tadashi Shoji, was my design oh, for the that. year. Very <laughs> fancy. Very <laughs> fancy. Yeah, every time I see one of his dresses now, he I know Neiman sell his clothing, and every time I see one in a catalog, ah, Tadashi. Oh, it's like your person. <laughs> right. Well, you know, you the difference between, of course, film and Broadway is that Broadway people still have to go to their jobs even during that award season, so mm -hmm. they are still performing every night, where film people can just, you know, go to well, the Well, except you don't do anything else. I sure. actually stopped working. I just, just, to, I just, just turned to be, down jobs because I felt it was important, you to know, to be a film. part of yeah. this. Yeah. Well, I know we have a lot of questions because we have a legend <laughs> in the true. studio with us. So, Caitlin, please. Yes. Get to our first question. Lots of questions. Okay. So, Alexandra would like to know if you could give yourself, uh, if, you're, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Just let go. Don't let mm -hmm. anything bother you. I mean, I think that as an actress and as a person that, you know, as you're growing up and getting older and you, you know, what people think or what, what you feel you should be doing and all that. And I, th mm -hmm. I just let all of that go. Yeah. So when did you first start performing? Uh, in my teens, basically. I went to the Cleveland Playhouse. I, I always say I got paid. I think I was like 19 or 20. And I was at the Cleveland Playhouse for five years before I came to New York. But you're from Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. And Waitress is, of course, a Midwestern show. Yeah, so right you, you know that sensibility. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> they were talking to me about accent, and I thought, I grew up in that. <laughs> I got it. Thank it's you. it's southern Indiana, and it, you can't get closer to southern Illinois than that. So. <laughs> no problems that. there. So uh, both Paul and Alec would like to know if they had to change a lot of the lines to switch over from Old Joe to Old Josie and what that process was like. They did, and uh, Jesse Nelson had done some of that before I came. Uh, actually, they sent it to me a few weeks before I came and started rehearsing. And then we made changes while we were rehearsing, and... Uh, I don't think it's changed that much. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some things she added. She knew how I worked and my sense of humor, and, and so she did some things in that direction. Uh, but I think basically it's the same script. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Waitress is directed by a woman, has an all-female creative team, mm -hmm. and having an old Josie, I think, even makes it more of a 
feminist That's work. one reason they wanted to do it, I think. You know, I, I feel that they, they just feel, and you know, we have so many young girls come and come back and see this show. They'll say, oh, this is the fourth or fifth time I've seen it. It you adds know. a different kind of message, yeah. I think. I mean, a more positive yeah. one. Not that it wasn't positive before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, some people like to know, what is your go-to diner order? If you were oh. to go to a diner, what would you eat? My diner order? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, if it's a Greek diner, <laughs> as I they would, all used to I be. would go for uh, spinach pie. Mm, <laughs> I classic have one choice. here that I go to and, <laughs> and have spinach pie. And uh, just eggs and bacon. There's nothing better than going and having late breakfast I in the diner. I think we all want breakfast all of a sudden. I want breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, now that we've asked that, what's your go-to pie? My go-to pie is pumpkin. We're, these are the hard-hitting questions, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. <laughs> Caitlin, do we have you any know, more? No, I didn't hesitate. No, <laughs> no I'm ready for these questions. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so your the new song is called Take It From an Old Woman. Old gal. Now. Take it from an old gal. Now, we did go, we started with Take It From an Old Ma'am. <gasps> ah. And they felt, I, I'd actually performed it like that for about a week or so. And they felt that they wanted to try gal. They just said, well, let's try it. Well, <laughs> all at once, you know, flipping everything. But it works. And so we've decided now to use gal. And that's what we're doing. Feels natural. I like yeah. it. So nice. Uh, what is that moment like on stage, being able to sing that song and have that moment with, um, with uh, yeah, Jenna. whoever's playing your Jenna? Well, it's wonderful. It, it uh, you know, I, I, I had an early career in musical theater, and so I did sing a lot and danced a lot. And uh, it was, I, I hadn't been doing it. I did a Glee and I did a PBS thing where I did Sophie Tucker. But it was so many years and I didn't know. They're so wonderful and the way they worked with me, both Diane and uh, Nadia, the musical director, it was just a joy, it really was. And now I'm just thrilled every night. I'm How did it thrilled. feel to step out on the stage for the first time after the, all those years? It was comfortable. You weren't really, nervous? No, I Love wasn't. I mean, I was pro. nervous because it was the first time with an audience, right. and that always, you know, it's, <laughs> my God, there are going to be people out there. <laughs> but it, it's, you know, it, it really wasn't, uh, I, I felt very comfortable, and I feel comfortable every night. And you didn't have to light up? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean... You know Electra, right? You know the character. She's a stripper. We'll yeah. move on. We'll move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> um, so John would like to know what was your first time being on stage, whether it went in like a play in school or a musical. It was. was it? You know, I I remember. I think it was uh, Goldilocks in about the first grade, yes. and I still remember it. Did you have the lead? Yes, okay. of course. I, I had was Goldilocks. Yeah. Of course you were. And in my senior year, I was voted most dramatic. You better believe it. I mean, Just your personality, you know, yeah. not on stage. No, it was because I spent so many hours on stage. I and did so what everything. was your first show at the Cleveland Playhouse? Um, oh, gosh. Was that it, your first professional show? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, it was a regional theater. It was not Union at the time. Mm -hmm. Now it is, mm -hmm. but it was the one of the oldest regional theaters. I'm from there. It was a beautiful oh, space, oh, yeah. and then they renovated it. The, we had three spaces. I was there in the 50s. That was my years there. Okay, but so different time. I can't time. think of the first. It was a, a popular Broadway show. But you really got to have your acting chops there by just doing. Oh gosh, because yeah. In the and I did, just keep I did musicals there, mm -hmm. and um, I did things like Crucible. I mean, I, I it was classic. wonderful. And then did you just? How did you decide to come to New York? Uh, I think I always knew this is where I was coming, and uh, I got married in Cleveland, and a lot. A lot of us left Cleveland and came to New York at the same time. It's very brave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I had a network. I mean, you know, there were a lot of us came up. Came, came together. Over. Yeah. It makes sense. Makes well, sense. One, one more question. Yes. One more. So Maddie would like to know, because Waitress is a romantic comedy movie, if there are any other rom-coms that you would like to see turn into a Broadway musical. Or perhaps appear in. Or appear, appear in. in. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh... 
I keep thinking of Julia Roberts because she did so many of them. <laughs> Oh, that my favorite, my best friend. My best friend's oh, wedding. My best, best friend's, friend's wedding. wedding. I yeah. love that film. There you go. I'm a little old for her role now, <laughs> but uh, other I'm than sure that, I'm sure we can find something. There's the something in there. <laughs> <laughs> love that. All right. Well, thank you, June. You thank are you. delightful to talk to, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. Have you seen Waitress lately? It's different. It's different, and it's great. Uh, so check it out. And Caitlin, will you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to this in a podcast form by searching for a hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Frothy of the Ferryman.